First of all, Russell, what's the injury situation? Yeah, we've picked up a couple of uh, injuries, niggly injuries, to be honest. Um, but that will give us an opportunity to um, play one or two others as well. So same same philosophy or policy really is to make two or three changes again and uh, and give somebody else the opportunity to show themselves. Can you tell us who the injuries are? Uh, no, because I'll be telling Barnet if I'm telling you. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep those to ourselves for now. Um, and, and as it is, well, one of them still might come through, but we'll have to wait and see. And what was your behind closed gut doors game like against Barnsley? Yeah, good, good. A really good exercise, uh, worthwhile. Um, it gave me an opportunity to see, obviously, some of our players and some of our young players at the football club as well, which I, I hadn't seen much of. Uh, and also, um, there was a couple of trialists on the day and one that performed um, pretty well as well. So, yeah, no, it was a useful exercise. And can you tell us who he was? <laughs> Not at this moment in time, John, but um, look, he's something we're looking at anyway um, going forward. Um, hopefully, we can come to um, some conclusion on that. So, you're having to sign him? This unnamed <laughs> there's a well, there's, a, there's always going to be a possibility, isn't there, if somebody's outstanding that you're going to see how the land lies and, um, you know, the. Chairman and I and the secretary were, uh, were we're looking at the situation. It might be something we can do. It might not. So, what are you thinking about this game? You say try another couple of players, but basically yeah. keep it competitive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Try to keep a, 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 an amount of momentum going, which is which is important at any football club. But and at the same time, give one or two others the opportunity to uh, show what they've got. And what are you expecting from Barnet? Um, they're playing with a real freedom, I think, Barnet at the minute. They've got a striker in a kindy who's, who's got 26 goals or something in that region. And um, I quite like the midfielder, Taylor in midfield, who's done very well for them. Um, so they've got, they, they, they're have got quite useful um, going forward and um, it'd, be, it'd be a tough competitive game. But they play, they, too, they do try to play as well, so it'd be a football match. And do you subscribe to the view that if you stop a kindy, you stop Barnet? No, not necessarily. I think they've got other threats as well. You've got the experienced Campbell Rice on, on on one side of the pitch, and I've had him before. And um, I mean, he can be a, he can be a match winner on his own. Um, there's no doubt about that. So they've, they've got some good players. And to be honest, it wasn't so many weeks ago that, that they were probably in a similar position to us, even closer to the playoffs. In fact, so. Um, they weren't far away. They'll be looking towards next season and, and, and building again. So, yeah, it'd be a good little yardstick as well to see where they're at. And what do you want to see from your side? Well, the same attitude that we've shown in, in, in certainly two out of the three games that we've had so far. A real positive attitude and um, getting on the front foot, which we did particularly in the last game. Um, looking for that creativity going forward again and creating chances and opportunities and, and, and by the same token can, can we be a little bit tighter uh, a little bit more ruthless at the back when we're defending and, and, and not allow teams back into it um, we'll be looking at that as well so both sides of it really in possession out of possession see if we can be a little bit better again and even in your short spell here you've seen the inconsistency that's dogged them all season really. yeah certainly certainly I did um, uh, with that first half at uh, Cheltenham, so we'll be looking to avoid that, that's for sure. Should be quite an atmosphere at the, at the ground. You've heard about the Mariachi band, I presume? Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> band's going. Uh, so, so, no, no, it's great. It's, it's the end of the season, and, you know, it, it's great that the fans are coming out in their numbers again, supporting us away from home, and um, let, let's hope we can uh, see them going home singing as well. I presume the players have to shut off from that, though, and just do their job professionally. Yeah, of course, of course. They want to put on the performance. I think that's the overwhelming thing. John, we still want a performance and still want a football result, uh, even though there are only two games to go. The end of the season coming up, decisions will have to be made fairly soon. How much closer are you now? Yeah, obviously closer than what I was a couple of weeks ago, and you know, getting getting close to <coughs> nailing it down a little bit more. So, yeah, probably some decisions we can we can look at uh, next week going forward. And have you started talks with anybody yet? Um, I've. Yeah, yeah, I've spoke, I've looked, and I've spoken, and um, looking at what might improve us. I think that's the important thing: is getting a few bodies in that um, will improve us. There, there, there'll always be plenty of bodies out there, and players put into you from various sources and agents, and 
you know, and, and they're coming through via via everybody really, via the secretary, via straight into me, via the, the scouts, etc. So there's always going to be bodies you can fill. The important thing is is you're getting bodies in that are going to affect your team in a positive way and move you forward. And does the fact you've got to reduce the number of bodies here maybe affect players that you might normally want to stay, but simply because you've got to get numbers out of the building? Well, it, it, that's, it's a good question. It's, it's, it's like it, the cards you dealt, the cards you dealt, and um, we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to <laughs> put on the pond deal with that. But... Um, yeah, it's it's there are players that are up and, and the players that are still contracted. So we're going to we're going to, we're going to have to deal with that. It's a, that's a financial thing as well, not just a, a football thing. So both those factors will come into play when you make decisions. That's that's the nature of it. And of course, the last game next week, and will the players know by then or very shortly after? Yeah, 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 yeah. I would have spoken to every single player. Will probably come in. Um, what was the players do? We'll, we'll be in all, all, all obviously most of next week and then probably the Monday and Tuesday of the following week just to ensure that everybody understands where they are um, and, and also the close season programme which um, they'll be going on with as well so um, you know there's lot, lot, lots to do lots to do John but you know it's, um, it, it, it's all good it's all good it's all positive um, and hopefully, you know, we can get things in place and ready for next season. It's it's good to be able to have that opportunity in the close season to to go um, wheel and deal, build a team, um, get a pre-season program that's going to be, um, you know, presentable and is is, is going to give us a, a good start um, for the new campaign. You gave a little smile then, as you said, the, the close season program. What you got lined up for? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, pl- oh the plenty, plenty. So it, it, it'd be important that um, these days, you know, they, they have to follow these programmes because I, 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 I think the six weeks are, are massively, massively important. And I, I think if you don't get through those six weeks or or it's like players joining you after three weeks of pre-season and having not done anything, you're playing catch-up and... Um, you can put that can go on during the season. So and sometimes you never claw back those days, those weeks. So I think it's imperative that you know players one come back in really good condition. Which again, we'll analyse that and we'll, we'll look at that. Um, but, but we're giving them the opportunity to ensure that they do come back in the kind of shape that we want them. Any chance of seeing a quasi as anti before the end of the season? Um, unlikely. That Dave doesn't think. That's probably a risk, and the player, to be honest, a, a risk worth taking, um, which might put him back. So, but that that, that will just mean that uh, I mean his his season won't end. He'll have to, you know, there'll be days where he will have to come in. You know, that's that's how it will work with me and and, and Dave, the physiologist. The, those players that are still injured will have to, you know, ensure that. You know, the work's being done and they're being monitored. It's in their best interest anyway. Could it just seem like a, a niggly injury, but it's gone on a while? Into- yeah, it has. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it has gone on. And uh, I think I think the the doubt in the, the player's mind was was the fact that he has had that kind of injury before, um, and clearly, um, you know, if there is a weakness there, didn't want it, and I think he perhaps came back too early before, so he didn't want to do any damage. So, yeah, I get that, I get that, but um, the important thing is now is that we do get it right because we don't want it reoccurring again. So, that's the situation there. Okay, that's okay. right to pick up from that. Yeah, is it a little bit frustrating for you that you haven't been able to sort of properly assess him or get? Yeah, of course, I want to assess everybody, but yeah. um, you know, it, it is what it is, mm, isn't it? Of course. But yeah, it would have been nice to have, uh, have had a look of uh, lots of things about Asante. So um, you know, it would have been nice to have seen him even in that game yeah. yesterday. Uh, sorry, Tuesday. It yeah, would have been useful. And Callum Dyson's obviously a lad that's on loan to you. If that loan yeah. comes to an end, is he someone yeah. that you maybe would like to bring back, or have you made a decision on him? Well, well, I think a, a Callum Dyson type mm-hmm. in League Two is is useful. Yeah, f- for sure. Um, I mean, we'll have to have dialogue with Everton. Mm-hmm. I believe his contract, Chile, may be up. Okay. Whether they're extending it at 
Everton, I'm not sure, but I'll speak to Joe Royal. I get on really well with Joe Royal. He'll let me know mm. what's happening there. Have you been impressed with what you've seen? Have you been impressed with what you've seen? Yeah, yeah, he's had, he's, had, he's had some good periods, mm. um, yeah. um, particularly starts when he started. He's done, he did very well in the first game, yeah. I thought, against Cambridge. But you've, you've identified that area where you said it to us when you're talking about areas that you're looking at in the summer, at the striking yes. areas, one of those areas that yes, you're definitely. focusing on. So. Yes. How, how much um, I think how much you're looking at that as a, as a sort of priority in terms of your striking options well you need you need, goal, you need goals don't you um, and as much as you want that from everywhere on the pitch it, it's nice if you know you're under pressure and away from home for mm. example and, and you've got a striker that you know can take that opportunity that one opportunity that comes along sometimes mm. so um to get that one is not easy. No. Um, but w w we're looking, getting a short list together mm. of possibilities that we know could probably do that at this mm. level. Your predecessor talked about there being an over reliance on Omar Bogle, who's still, I think, still top sco goal scorer of yeah. the squad, having yeah. moved on to Wigan. You've obviously seen Sam take up that mantle a little bit with the, yeah. the goals that he's chipped in with. Do you, do you subscribe to that view that there's a, there's a little bit of a they're looking for the missing that sort of real sort of talisman kind of thing. Well, you, you can you can have that. The, 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 there are two ways of looking at it, but it, it's nice if you can if you can marry the two and get the two yeah. where you're getting goals from all over the pitch as well as, well as a, a certain reliability up the up the top. But I think, um, for example, when, when when Cardiff got promoted that season. Um, I mean, they scored forty percent, forty-eight percent of their goals from set plays, but mm. don't think anybody reached double figures. But they had threats all over the yeah, pitch, of course. Um, and it'd be nice. And, and 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 what has been quite pleasing is it looks like um, Osborne can get a goal. Yeah. It looks like Clem can get a goal. Um, I think we look like we can be a threat mm. from a corner. Scott Vernon got a goal. Yeah. So. So I think that, that that's an important element as well, you mm. know, that we can contribute from other areas and we're not so reliant on on the one striker up front who, if he picks up an injury, you know, then, yeah. you know, if you are self-reliant on him, then you, you're giving yourself a problem. So I think it's important to contribute from all over the pitch, not just your two strikers, but if you've got reliability up there that clearly, you know, can get your goals as well, it's... So that's the ideal world, isn't it? John touched on it in his interview about lads that are coming to the end of their contracts. Yeah. Um, Player of the season awards on Tuesday night. I think Danny Andrews expected to sort of sweep the board there in terms of the senior awards. Okay. How confident are you of being able to sort of hold on to him? Because there's bound to be interest in him given the season he's had. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, 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 no direct interest to me, it has to be said. But yeah, yeah. I, listen, I've been very happy with Danny and. Um, He's somebody that we want to um, remain at the football club for sure. Has have, have any discussions in terms of Danny and the other lads? Have, have contractual discussions started yet? No, no. We'll, 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 we'll get Saturday's game out of the course, way, and, yeah. um, and that would have given us four games to assess um, most of the group. You know. Mm. How much of a blueprint did last Saturday's game give you in terms of how you want to approach? This coming game against Barnet, in terms of your approach. Well, I, well, I think it's important to, to to make the remark that every game's kind of different, really. Of course, yeah. Um, and every team will give its different set of problems, or might present itself with opportunities. Also, mm. um, um, I thought what we did do well is we, with the ball, we exposed the opportunities that we had. Um, we found space. We mixed our play up well from playing short our decisions to play short or to play long were very good mm -hmm. there were some very good long field diagonal balls played there were some very good short passing between um, Yeovil played which, which caused them an awful lot of trouble so so the decision making was probably the best it's mm -hmm. been however I think we had a little bit more time than what we'd had yes. in the previous games yeah. to do that and that's not always the case you yeah. see so it, it, it's it's having, it's recognising when you've got to move the ball quickly sometimes mm. and maybe miss out the midfield because you're being pressed. It's, it's, it's seeing that and making those good choices that are important. 